Tonight, On the Move talks to Bello Cipriani, the writer in residence at Holy Names University and the author of a book called Blind Memoir. His book tells about Bello's life after he lost his eyesight, recalling how he learned to cope with his challenges, newfound skills and adaptations, plus how he became a writer and journalist despite his loss of vision. Our host, Donnie Yeager, also met with Steve Mahan, who is the CEO of the Santa Clara Valley Blind Center. This agency provides services for people with visual limitations, including many classes and activities which we will hear more about. Steve has limited sight, but a video on the web highlights him sitting behind the wheel of the new self-driving Google car. Now here's our host, Donna Yeager. Hi, I'm Donna Yeager with On The Move, and I'd like to welcome our very special guests, Steve Mahan. Welcome, Steve. Thank you very much. <laughs> And Bello Cipriani. Welcome, Bello. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs> Steve, what is your official title there? <laughs> I'm the uh, Chief Executive Officer or the Executive Director of the Santa Clara Valley Blind Center in San Jose, California. Okay, great. And what is the actual mission statement there? <laughs> the Blind Center improves the quality of life and the independence of blind and visually impaired individuals uh, through uh, rehabilitative programs. Great, wonderful, that's fantastic. And Bill, where are you working right now? <laughs> I'm the writer in residence at Holy Names University in Oakland, okay. and I'm also a freelance writer. Wow, you guys are so busy. <laughs> Both of you, are really. a lot of activities going on. <laughs> so, and what does that encompass for you, Bello, at the school? I uh, work with the students, I basically bring literary culture to the campus. I do workshops, work with students at the Writing Center, and I'll be launching their online journal next semester. So it uh, keeps me busy, but it's, um, it's a good busy. I enjoy yeah. the uh, <laughs> student interaction. Oh, cool. Very good. Excellent. And Steve, there is an actual um, meeting that you have uh, for your clients, and it's on Wednesdays, right? Correct. Every Wednesday, uh, we have a meeting of somewhere between 65 and 75 uh, clients that come to the center for what we call our client day. Yeah. And they break out from that into various other activities. Oh, great. Wonderful. And you have uh, people who come in to, to do public speaking to talk about different events and activities happening, right? Correct. Uh, yeah. It gives us the opportunity to uh, share community resources, uh, sometimes involving blindness and sometimes involving yeah. just regular aspects of life with our clients. Right. Wonderful. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> and Bello, I know that you um, have all kinds of really high-tech devices and, and technical equipment that you use, right? <laughs> I worked in Silicon Valley for almost a decade, so I, yeah. when I became blind, I really um, made sure I acquainted myself with adaptive technology. So I have yeah. just everything under the sun. I have, you know, <laughs> uh, the, uh, refreshable Braille monitors, laptops. You know, I have a, an iPhone. I have a PDA, and uh, you know, I make sure I make I use it every day. What's a PDA? <laughs> it's well, it's it's my basically my digital reader. You know, oh. and it's um, it, a Linux box with you know Braille input. Oh, cool. Awesome. Wow. That's great. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, and recently you, um, well, not really recent, but um, I was so excited to see that you, uh, you were asked to sit in the Google car, right, as it drove around the area, Steve? <laughs> Uh, back in January of uh, 2012, yeah. I became uh, Google's official number one first user of uh, the <laughs> Google self-driving car. Uh, oh. So I was actually behind the wheel in my hometown in Morgan Hill. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. I got to see the footage on YouTube, and it was great. It was wonderful. <laughs> you took my line, though. <laughs> when I drive my van, I say, look, Mom, no hands. <laughs> and that's exactly what you said. <laughs> Behind the wheel. That's correct. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> but it was really interesting to see. I mean, it's I don't I still don't understand how that works, but <laughs> very high tech. <laughs> it's a very complex system, uh, and it's uh, extraordinary how it works, and it's extraordinary how well it works. And yeah. So it's, uh, yeah. it's very exciting for our blind community. Wow, that's fantastic. <laughs> Really interesting, and if anybody wants to to see it, they can just go to YouTube, right, and and look it up. How do they look it up? <laughs> 
All they have to do is uh, Google uh, self-driving car or Google oh. self-driving car, oh, okay. and uh, it'll <laughs> pop up in, in the search. All right. <laughs> <How fun. laughs> oh, it's fantastic. And uh, Bello, you recently received a, uh, a new service dog, right? Or a guide dog, sorry. I did. Guide Just dog, last yeah. August, I yeah. was matched with my second guide dog. His name is oh. Oslo. He uh, was raised in, in Texas, actually, and oh. he's much bigger than my previous dog. Uh, my dog, Madge, yeah. retired, which is, you know, challenging, but, you know, it was, yeah. it was her time to, you know, um, yeah. Uh, retire and yeah. you know she's just about 45 pounds and he's 75 pounds so it's you know I'm still wow. acclimating and you know the the joys of having a puppy in my life again so um, it's definitely it's fun and it keeps me busy yeah <laughs> and you say he's gonna get a lot bigger right <laughs> yeah the vet said he might you know break 80 85 so wow well, he's a beautiful dog thank he's you gorgeous. you know and when I grab his paws like they're so much bigger than his body still you know so I could tell that you know in my mind he looks like a gangly teenager still and <laughs> he's still you know fill out a little bit and you know got some time to go yeah exactly and I think this would be a good time to talk about how uh, how important it is for um, people just in the community uh, definitely they should never pet a, a guide dog because he's working he has a job and and it's important that the dog concentrate on you, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. You could tell us a little more about that. <laughs> well, especially right now, he's you know, we, we're, our bond is still being formed, right. and so you know sometimes it might look like the puppy or you know the dog is <laughs> sitting there not doing much, but they're actually their focus is on me. And if you know people start petting them while they're in harness, then yeah. it teaches them that it's okay to break that focus. Right. And so you know possibly they could break focus while I'm crossing the street which would be very dangerous right right yeah October is you know national service dog month so it's just something that you know one of the projects I'm working on is you know through um, guide dogs for the blind is you know I do a lot of um, talks at you know public venues and educate on the etiquette which is you know I, I feel that when people pet the dog is not you know for for being malicious I think it's just you know lack oh. of information that's just you know oh, something yeah. I pride myself in is you know giving people the right resources whether they're you know blind or sighted great and the bonding has the bonding going <laughs> you know it, it's this very fascinating phase where every day is you know an adventure and you yeah. know I, I'm, a, I'm a writer so I tend to you know just take notes as he's doing things and yeah. <laughs> I, they tell you not to compare your you know your dogs to each other but it's hard not to you know and it's just how he shows his affection is so different but then my, my first you know um, previous guy but it's all just it's all just love it's just expressed differently and right. you know the things he does for me it's you know I swear he could almost talk sometimes Steve your facility has actually been around for how many years? Uh, the Santa Clara Valley Blind Center yeah. uh, came into existence in 1953. So wow. it's actually 60 years. So wow. I guess we'd call it our diamond jubilee, so to speak. <laughs> um, and uh, we're very fortunate. It was uh, The property was donated yeah. uh, by Lions Clubs uh, in the area. Yeah. And we're a separate uh, 501c3 nonprofit. And yeah. we've been providing services to the blind and the visually impaired community uh, now for 60 years. And what are some of the services there? Uh, we provide every all the fundamental services as well as some uh, very modern things. Yeah. Uh, some of the first things that uh, blind people, um, people who encounter vision loss, significant vision loss need is uh, mm -hmm. they need to be safe and so we teach orientation and mobility uh, which may be uh, or more ordinarily is white cane training, mm -hmm. uh, which is also necessary before a person can uh, receive a guide dog or qualify to get a guide right. dog. They have right. to go through white cane training. They have to be uh, competent to be mm -hmm. safe themselves. Okay. Uh, we do uh, a number of different kinds of orientation classes uh, mm -hmm. for adjusting to vision loss and living with vision loss. Uh, we provide exercise classes, uh, counseling. We <laughs> have an arts program, ceramics, drawing. Uh, uh, we also uh, have a very good accessible technology program, yeah. oh, uh, teaching great. everything from keyboarding to iPhones. And also, Bello, you um, are doing a lot of uh, activities in the in the community, and um, you're asked to do a lot of public speaking, right? That's right. You know, yeah. I've um, ever since my book came out back in 2011, I've been mm -hmm. very fortunate with you know a lot of opportunities to you know share, not just share my story, but yeah. you know really <laughs> contribute. Um, you know, um, with what I've learned, um, uh -huh. you know, learning to be blind as an adult. And, um, you know, I found myself speaking at many universities. I guess lectured at Yale last year. <laughs> I keynote the ADA um, celebration in San Francisco as well. 
and I'm doing talks, you know, about two, three times a month. So I, I travel quite a bit. Um, wow. <laughs> you know, I'm definitely very familiar with flying and, you know, getting around in new, t new cities. Um, I spent last summer in, in Europe. Um, wow. And that was definitely uh, <laughs> quite the change from the States. Wow. Um, but generally, you know, definitely I, I speak a lot. And um, it's something that I'm passionate about. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I hope to continue that for a while. I need to ask you um, a little bit more about the... Um, for example, on Wednesday, I, I'm really interested in the, the Wednesday get-together because it's, it sounds like it's a really good-sized group that actually comes. And it's every single Wednesday? or Every single Wednesday. Yeah. Um, <laughs> unlike a lot of uh, blind agencies, yeah. you know, many of them are not blessed with having a big auditorium, a place that people can come together and meet. Oh, okay. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, we believe that it's really uh, very encouraging, you know, very exciting. Yeah. Uh, we see this especially in our new clients. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, the fact that uh, so many of our clients that come in on when every Wednesday, um, you know, are are old timers that have been there for a long time, <laughs> but um, to have 65 or 75 of our clients come every Wednesday at 10 o'clock in the morning, wow. um, we provide the refreshments, you know, as they yeah. get there and. Uh, provide speakers and opportunities for them to visit with one another. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have a mentoring program wow. you know, so that we have new clients and we help them get acquainted with other people. And uh, it's great for them to uh, see people that also have lost a significant, or all, a significant amount or all of their vision. Right, right. And uh, to see them happy and functioning and interactive and getting out and doing things together. Cool. Uh, and then we springboard off of that. Um, wow. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a big deal for clients to... Uh, take the time and sometimes the expense to get someplace and so we oh. use that as an opportunity for them to go into various mm -hmm. kinds of uh, support groups or other activities while they're there at the center oh. and mm -hmm. um, so it's it's somewhat exceptional for our organization and mm -hmm. uh, we're blessed to have the facility to do that. Yeah. Well and also networking when they're they're with other people it's it's probably wonderful to be able to to visit old friends and new friends and and meet people and see you know what other people are doing and what they're participating in that's great. <laughs> Absolutely I think yeah. for me when I was rehabilitating <laughs> I felt that meeting, you know, uh, people who've already completed their rehabilitation and were working right. really in inspired me to continue and trudge forward. So I think that those <laughs> services are very, you know, important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And actually, Steve, there's yeah. other uh, locations around the, the Bay Area, whether you're in um, Berkeley or in the Palo Alto, you know, northern um, not the South Bay, but the the North Bay, and there's you know, different locations all over the place. But but if they contact you, they can probably you know find out more information about you know who's where, and you know if they're um, <clears throat> hopefully <clears throat> excuse me if they're near a, like a bus uh, service, then they can uh, get to that location more easily, right? <laughs> Our agencies are not competitive. You right, know, our, right. our agencies are cooperative. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we're really blessed in the Bay Area to have yeah. some excellent agencies from yeah. North Bay right down through the South Bay. Right. Uh, in this area, there's the Vista Center for the Blind mm -hmm. and Visually Impaired, yeah. uh, as well as our center in the South Bay. And then there are uh, our organizations in Oakland, yeah. uh, San Francisco, uh, up in Sonoma mm -hmm. County, yeah. and out through Contra Costa. <laughs> yeah. uh, so the Bay Area is a great place to be if you're that's needing services <laughs> as a blind or visually impaired person. And you work together. That's wonderful. Yes, that's great. <laughs> absolutely. You know, and so we happily recommend uh, that our clients, if they find a service or an aspect of service, yeah. have another agency that can help them. <laughs> that's great. Right. Uh, we're going to be putting on, for example, uh, a Viva Rally for the veterans, uh, for the VA. We're going to be hosting a Viva Rally uh, this coming Friday. Oh. And, uh, and it's just a way of cooperating with another agency to encourage wow. uh, their clients, uh, you know, their people to get out and yeah. find services. Oh, fantastic. And if people are interested in, in finding out more information, they can contact you guys and they can kind of get plugged in, hooked in. <laughs> What's going on? That's great. Yes, oh, absolutely. Marvelous. And actually, uh, Bello, you are really involved in an interesting form of martial arts. What is the name of that? <laughs> it's called capoeira. Yeah. It's an Afro-Brazilian martial art. It's the national sport there. Oh. And it combines acrobatics with a lot of combat moves. It was um, developed by um, African slaves in Brazil during their um, slavery period. And it was disguised as a dance, so you know the slave owner wouldn't know that they were practicing these, you know, very um, 
uh, aggressive sport. And so I, I train in Berkeley uh, with Mestre Accordion. And, you know, it's something that took some time to adjust. I mean, it's done to live music and singing. And mm -hmm. so he was, you know, very patient in developing, you know, a way to teach me and to let me, you know, um, practice and, you know, get a great workout and have fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And hopefully he's not too hard on you. <laughs> no, you know, I'm, I, I started doing this as a teenager and there's things now that I can't do. And sometimes I feel that my, that my, my brain writes checks that my body can't cash. And so I might be doing a, something in the air. I'm like, oh, I can't do this anymore. And, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm going through that readjusting phase. But, you know, I'm, I'm still, you know, doing backflips and work, walking on my hands. And Wow. And the drums are interesting, too. You said there's drumming that goes on, right? It, 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 there's live drumming, there's live singing, um, there's a chorus that is involved. And, wow. you know, um, mo most people, what, you know, um, when they look at it, it looks like they're breakdancing. And that's where breakdancing came from, where when Brazilians immigrated to New York and started doing this on the street, oh. people started copying it. So this is, this is the roots of breakdancing. Wow. Um, and it's, it's a lot of fun. And there's different types of, you know, ways of playing. You could play it very aggressively. Oh. Or you could play very playfully, you know, um, trying to, you know, um, sneak um, takedowns and, you know, be uh, just goofy. But um, <laughs> what most people see is actually, the, you know, the, uh, the exchange of playfulness. Wow, wow. And you said that it, it was very difficult to find a, uh, an instructor because, how, well, how come? <laughs> well, you know, um, there's a lot of schools here in the Bay Area, and I reached out to a couple of them, and yeah. they, were, they had some hesitation, yeah. you know, and it took a while to find an instructor who said, who would take the time to develop yeah. a way to teach me. Right. You right. know, there weren't a lot of, you know, I, I Googled, you know, blind capoeira players, and I did not find anything. And so once I you know, established my training with Mr. Accordion. I actually, you know, made a short film, which people could find it on YouTube. Um, <laughs> they could find it under my name or um, Blind Capoeira Player. And it shows my training. It shows, you know, how I do certain things, uh, my sequences, my, my way of, you know, uh, articulating this martial art. Wow. And it was very helpful because, um, you know, once I have this, you know, I have this clip online, I could travel to other parts of the world and say, hey, my instructor in California is teaching me and this is how he does it. <laughs> And it's really allowed me to um, not just network, but, you know, teach people that, you know, um, there's different ways of doing things, that there's always something after the nothing, right? And, right. <laughs> and I think that it's been wonderful in getting more people to do it. I've received many emails from people in the UK, Asia, saying that, you know, because of my video, they've been able to, you know, court someone locally to them to teach them. Oh, that's wonderful. But you're a trailblazer. <laughs> that's wonderful. <laughs> And you also, um, you've received a lot of wonderful comments from people uh, on YouTube regarding your book, right? Yeah. I, I have, you know, yeah. my book, Blind Day Memoir, came out in 2011, and I'm still mm -hmm. doing a lot of um, book events, you know, yeah. uh, for it. I'm doing one next month in Berkeley, a really big one. Um, <laughs> and so it, it's just, I, I feel blessed. You yeah. know, I, I put something out there and didn't know what, how it it would be received and it's, the response has just been wonderful. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy that it's been used as curriculum at the university level and mm -hmm. also high schools have picked it up. So, wow. you know, i very, very fortunate that that <laughs> panned out for me that way. Well, that's great. <laughs> and so um, there's a, a second book, right, that you're working on? There is, <laughs> you know, um, you know, my, I, my second book will be out um, next fall, uh, I mean, excuse me, next spring, 20, uh, uh, well, the, the date's still to be decided, but okay. you know, it'll be come out 2014, and it, that's a novel, and oh, okay. you know, one of the fun things about it, it has nothing to do with blindness, um, an excerpt of it will be published um, November, uh, next month, November 2013, um, wow. on, in a magazine <laughs> called Literary Juice, <laughs> and so it, it's nice to have something outside disability, you know, so to prove, not to prove, but to, you know, have it, you know, People experience my fiction, which is quite different. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic. <laughs> well, Steve, um, tell us what the actual address is, uh, your location there. <laughs> We're located at 101 oh. North Bascom in San Jose, California. That's okay. a couple of blocks north of San Carlos Boulevard. Okay. And um, our uh, telephone number there is uh, 408 295 4016. And we uh, love 
getting questions from people who <laughs> ask about services. Wonderful. And what are the hours there? Uh, we're open every uh, weekday uh, from 9 in the morning until 3. Uh, my oh. staff is usually there later <laughs> than that, but we're open for clients okay. uh, five days a week. <laughs> Wonderful. Bello, if people want to uh, find out more about the book, how would they contact you? Or They could reach uh -huh. me at bellocipriani.com. I'm also on, at social media. Um, I'm at Facebook at uh, www.facebook.com slash Bello Cipriani and my Twitter name is Belloism which is spelled B-E-L-O-I-S-M <laughs> and I have a lot of tweets and I share a lot of information about disability related content and um, I also expose you know different disabled artists and you know different ways to express um, you know thoughts so um, if you you know if they're interested in you know, hearing more about my projects and just being more involved in <laughs> The disability art, artist community, definitely uh, check me out on Twitter. Fantastic. And you said that you're really traveling all over the, uh, all over the United States with the, your different speaking engagements, right? <laughs> I am, you know, it's still going pretty strong. I spent the, the weekend in L.A., did a, um, at a literary event there and, you know, got to see old friends. And, you know, it's, it's been consistent for the last two years and I'm just, I'm just very fortunate. Uh-huh. Well, that's great. And, you know, I, I was very fortunate to uh, do a lot of traveling in Germany and Japan and uh, Austria. And um, I just wanted to add to our conversation earlier that you said that people were, uh, were very uh, accommodating with your guide dog uh, in, in, uh, in parts of Europe. And they're, they're great in Germany because, you know, people are allowed to have their dogs under the table in restaurants and, you know, they're, in some, in some cases, even on, if they're a itty bitty little dog, they're allowed on the little chair right next to the owner. <laughs> I thought that was incredible. <laughs> you know, we, have, uh, we have a lot of, uh, you know, different situations here in the States, but, um, but you know, hopefully, uh, People are getting better with, you know, being more cooperative with the guide dog, uh, being in restaurants. And, yeah. I've definitely seen an improvement in yeah. just the last <laughs> couple of years since I've had, you know, my first guide. Yeah. And, you know, I just hope that it gets better. I mean, I was in <laughs> Europe and some places were easier than others to navigate. And it's just like the States, you know, in the big <laughs> cities here, it's a breeze, where, you know, versus when you step into more rural areas, it becomes a bit of a challenge. But, you know, um, generally Europe is fairly accessible and I haven't gone to Asia yet, but I hope to very soon. Yeah. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> Fantastic. And, um, well, tell us a little bit more about the martial arts. I just think that's so <laughs> amazing. <laughs> You, there's a lot of acrobatics like I said it's disguised as a dance and um, we you know we have a, a base like in most martial arts do but it, the base is always changing so the yeah. person's always moving around and there's a lot of you know hand gestures yeah. um, you know it's it's something that I you know took a while to adapt to without sight right. and it's something that I discuss in the um, in the short documentary I, I have on YouTube, how I did that. And, you know, basically is, you know, I, I could listen to people's breath and I could tell whether, you know, if you're moving that fast, they start breathing, you know, pretty hard. <laughs> and so you can hear their breath, you can hear the floor squeaking. You know, sometimes I've had the instructor put bells on their ankles and, you know, um, and that works too. <laughs> um, but no, definitely martial arts. And, you know, I, I've definitely kept up with um, just being, you know, active. You know, I, I hike. I, I walk a lot. I, I dance. I like to dance, actually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you know, I just like to be active. Yeah, that's wonderful. <laughs> You're keeping on the move. <laughs> Definitely. That's right. And you did a great job with that with your Google card. <laughs> well, you have to keep on the move. <laughs> Adding to what you know, Bella said, a lot of our clients yeah, yeah. Uh, find that as they lose their vision, <laughs> right. sometimes they struggle with balance uh, uh, because your vision is, you know, part of your balance system. Right, so, right. you know, so it's always encouraging. It's always uh, exciting. You know, when we have uh, fellows in the um, in the blind community yeah. uh, that are staying physically very active, doing right. uh, doing sports, uh, you know, doing sports or things like that, that yeah. require <laughs> require agility and balance yeah, because right. it's very easy for a 
you know, for a newly blind person to right. feel like they're losing everything. Definitely. And uh, so, you know, it's, it's uh, uh, Bella's an inspiration. Yeah, definitely. Steve, tell us one more time what that address and phone number is for people to call. <laughs> sure. Uh, it's uh, 101 North Bascom in San Jose. Uh, the telephone number is 408 <laughs> 295-4016 okay. and okay. <laughs> our website is visionbeyondsight.org. A fantastic. Book. What a great URL. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a long URL. Yeah. <laughs> well, you won't forget it. <laughs> That's right. And the hours again are Monday through Friday? Monday through Friday, 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Okay, great. And Bella, tell me your uh, address again or the, uh, you know, the a email. <laughs> yeah, the, the website is bellocipriani.com. Okay. okay. Um, I'm on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash bellocipriani. And my Twitter name is belloism, B-E-L-O-I-S-M. And they could also find me on YouTube and, you know, put me into a search, um, Google search, and they could find all my um, articles fantastic. and, you know, um, all right. That's great. Well, Bella, I want to thank you so very much for joining us. Thank, thank you for you. having me. Thanks. And Steve, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for the invitation. Thank and thank you. you for pairing me up in this interview with Bella. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you so very much for joining us. Until next time, I'm Donna Yeager with On The Move. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> Auto driving. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Look, Ma, no hands. <laughs> no hands anywhere. No hands, no feet. No hands, no feet. <laughs> Let's go get a taco at the drive thru. Yeah, push that up. I'm doing very well. How are you today? 95% of my vision is, is gone. You lose your timing in life, everything takes you much longer. There are some places that you cannot go. There are some things that you really cannot do. Where this would change my life is to give me the independence and the flexibility to go the places I both want to go and need to go when I need to do those things. Take them on the move. So let's pick up our dreams. Take them on.